Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, the Apostle John, being guided by the Spirit of God, continues to record what he experienced. He says, and the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, remember, sometimes in the Bible, stars symbolically represent angels. So this is what he's talking about. And notice this angel falls from heaven, and he's given the key to the bottomless pit. He didn't... Uh, Lead voluntarily. He got kicked out, in other words. Verse 2 says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, it's very important that we distinguish between this angel and the angel in Revelation chapter 20, because this angel... John saw gets kicked out of heaven. He fell, and he's allowed to go down and open up the bottomless pit. But in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3, the Bible tells us, And I saw an angel come down from heaven. See, he came down. He wasn't kicked out. He didn't fall. He came down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. You see that? Verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So this angel here in Revelation chapter 20 is going to be a good angel, one of God's angels, who's going to have the job of arresting Satan and locking him up for a thousand years so he will not be able to bother anybody during the thousand-year earthly reign of Jesus Christ. But at the end of that thousand years, he will be released from the bottomless pit because those people will have to be tested just like the early overcomers were tested by the devil. So the angel in Revelation chapter 9 is not the same angel in Revelation chapter 20. Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 9. Again, verse 1 says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star, which is an angel, and we're going to support that when we get down a little further in this ninth chapter, that this star represents an angel. And, and, and I'll show you exactly who it is when we get down there. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him. Notice the pronoun him. That's how we know we're not talking about a literal star. Was given the key of the bottomless pit. So he was given the key of the bottomless pit. Uh, verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit. As the smoke of a great furnace in the Sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them 
was given power or authority as the scorpions of the earth have power, which means authority. Verse 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So these are going to be locusts from the bottomless pit, unlike any locust we ever seen. And they're being released for the sole purpose of tormenting the wicked for five months. Notice they cannot touch any of God's people, those who have God's seal in their foreheads. They can only torment the ones who don't belong to God. So, you know, you got these pre-tribulation rapture escapist teaching that we're not going to be here during this time. And they show the ignorance of our Father's word. Our Father is well capable of protecting us right in the middle of the battlefield. He has done it many times before, and he, he will do it at this time as well. And notice a lot of the plagues that God is going to bring in the last days, he brought in ancient time. Like he brought a locust plague against Pharaoh of Egypt, and now he's going to bring a locust plague to punish the wicked in the last days. Verse 5, let's continue. It says here, and to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented. How long? Five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Verse 6 says, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So these locusts, are not going to be eating up any green plants or trees. They're going to be tormenting these men who don't have God's seal for five months. And it's going to be like a scorpion just stinging them over and over. And it's going to be so bad that they're going to want to die. But God's not going to allow them to die. So it behooves you and I to make sure that we're on God's side. Because what is going to happen to the wicked is just terrible. The punishment that God is going to bring upon them is horrible. And then when they end up in the lake of fire, that's going to be even worse. Verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns of gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. That was verse 7. Verse 8. And, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Verse 9, that was verse 8. And they had breastplates, as it were, uh, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to battle. Verse 10. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. So they're going to be unlike any locust ever seen to man. And they're going to be horrifying looking little creatures. And they're going to be flying around stinging men for five months. Only the men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Only the wicked are going to suffer this judgment, not God's people. Uh, now, verse 11 tells us exactly who that star was that fell from heaven and was given the permission to release these locusts from the bottomless pit. It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, or the angel that's going to end up locked up in the bottomless pit, whose name is in the Hebrew tongue Abaddon, but in Greek, in the Greek tongue has his name Apoya. And so when we look up the word or the name Abaddon in the Strong's Concordance, we see it's number three, and it tells us it's a destroying angel. But when we look up the word Apoyon in the Strong's Concordance, it's 623, and it tells us beyond a shadow of a doubt who, the, who this angel of the bottomless pit is. It says a destroyer, that is Satan. So that's why verse 1 said, Again, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall 
from heaven. Just like in Revelation chapter 12, when Satan is going to get the boot, when he gets kicked out. And, and John says he saw the devil get kicked out and his angels get kicked out. And so this is Satan. And he's going to be allowed to release these locusts from the same prison he's going to be imprisoned in for a thousand years. All right? Let's move on. Verse 12. John says, one woe is past. Woo! And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So he said, one down, two to go. Verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded his trumpet. The sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horn, horns of the golden altar, which is before God. 14. That was 13. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the what? Third part of man. So when the sixth angel sounds his trumpet, God is going to have these four angels that have been imprisoned in the great Euphrates River release so they can go and influence this huge army and that army is going to come and bring about the destruction of a third of the population of the earth. Verse 16 says, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand and I heard the number of them. In other words, 200 million. That's how many uh, uh, people are going to be in this army. And a lot of us scholars believe it's going to be uh, China's army and some of the other Asian armies that the devil is going to bring into the conflict in the last days. All right, that was verse 16. Verse 17 says, And thus, or in this manner, I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of Jason and brimstone, John says, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. You see that? And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Now, I truly believe what John saw was one of our modern day armies. And, you know, because they didn't exist in his time. And so he was describing them as best as he could. He said the heads of the horses were as the heads of of lions and out of their mouths issue fire, smoke, and brimstone. I believe he saw, saw our modern day army with tanks, shooting, and um, uh, machine guns mounted on the back of um, jeeps, shooting, and rocket launchers shooting. This is what I believe he saw. Verse 18, he says, By these three was the third part of men killed by the smoke, I mean, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. So what I believe he saw was a lot of rocket launchers with nuclear warheads on them. And he saw them firing and he saw the devastation that was caused as a result of those nuclear missiles being fired. That's what I believe he saw. Uh, verse 19 he says, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto scorpions and had heads. And with them they do hurt. So I believe he saw some of the war helicopters flying. And to him, they looked like locusts with uh, heads. And so we will find out if we're still alive when that time comes. If what I think he saw is correct. But it's going to be horrible. And then verse 20 and, uh, and 21 to conclude, John says, And the rest of the men which were not killed, pay attention to this, by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. 21. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. 
And this is why God is going to bring these judgments upon the world of the ungodly. So it behooves you and I to make sure that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior Why we have a chance and we serve him faithfully until the day we die if we want to avoid these judgments coming upon us. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. (laughs) And if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry and I need your support saints so please do that and last but not least it just came to my mind if you really were blessed by a Bible study video take the time to put something in the comment section it encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store, check out 
the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.